IT expertise, setting up sweet home Wi-Fi. By the time we're done here, you will understand core Wi-Fi principles and be able to design a home wireless network. IT expertise is a brand new format at CBT Nuggets designed to make someone immediately successful in real world situations by delivering practical topics and solutions for current technology. So the technology that we're discussing today is wireless networking and at the heart of a wireless network is a wireless access point. These little gems take the signal from your wired connection and translate it into the air. Now, while that sounds amazing, truth be told, they are actually a step backwards in terms of stability. Connecting a network device to a wire is always more stable than using wireless. However, last I checked, my smartphone didn't have an ethernet port, so most people are willing to accept the trade-off in terms of flexibility. The wireless network itself is governed by the 802.11 standards. That's what allows you to buy a Cisco wireless access point, an Apple laptop, a Roku adapter for your TV, and an Xbox, and they can all join the same wireless network. It's because it's designed to a standard. The original wireless standards that took over the world by storm were the 802.11b and a standards. The standards then evolved to 802.11g and then n and then ac and on and on we go. Each one of the standards typically expands the wireless access point's ability to gain speed or avoid interference or a variety of other features. Now these wireless access points come as standalone devices like you see here, here, and here, or you might have them integrated into a router like you see right here. <laughs> Boo, hiss, I don't like integrated wireless access points. And that's because these are designed as all-in-one devices and they come in many different shapes and sizes and vendors that are out there. The problem with them is that they are designed to have one device rule them all. Like that one device runs your entire house. And if the signal isn't strong enough, you start getting into weird incompatibilities when you try to bring other devices alongside it. I much prefer to buy a pack of wireless access points for the house that are all the same vendor. They speak the same language and I can manage them all from one interface. You don't usually get that with these integrated wireless access points. Now we get into a little of the nitty gritty detail that you need. Wireless access points run over unlicensed frequencies. And that's a great thing. That means the government doesn't manage the frequencies that you use. I don't know if any of you saw the movie in the 1980s called Pump Up the Volume with Christian Slater. He actually ran a pirate radio station from his dorm room and at the end of the movie gets busted because you can't do that. You're sending out broadcast signals in a managed frequency space. The great news is the government has said these frequency spectrums will not be managed by us. So you are free to bring up a wireless network or use a cordless phone or a Bluetooth headset or any other broadcasting like device in those frequencies without registering them with us and paying us money. Now, the only problem with that is that these are unlicensed frequencies. So if your neighbor is using them and really messing up your network because you're getting interference and crosstalk and all that kind of stuff, there's nobody to complain to. That's part of the mindset that we need to have when we start using these frequencies. And by the way, nobody really uses 900 megahertz for wireless networks, it's too slow. The more this direction you go, the more range you get, but the slower connection. The more this direction you go, the more your range is limited, but you get a faster speed. Now just about every wireless access point you buy for your house is going to be an omnidirectional antenna. Now, technically, that means they transmit equally in all directions, but I want to make sure you really understand what that means. If you and I were to climb a really tall ladder and stand above this omnidirectional wireless access point and look down and somehow turn on our radioactive superpowers that enable us to see the wireless signal, we would see something that looks like this. Now, that looks like a big gushy circle, but keep in mind our perspective. We're standing above the wireless access point looking down. So we're actually looking at it radiating out. If I could draw three dimensional, that'd be awesome, but I can't. It's kind of radiating down all directions horizontally. Again, we're looking from the top down. Everybody got that perspective, right? Looking from the top down. Now, if you and I then took our elevator back down and stared at it from the side and used our radioactive superpower to see how much wireless signal was actually going up and down from the bottom of that wireless access point, it would be very limited. These access points are really designed to shoot signal in all directions horizontally, not vertically. Now why that's important to you is I know some of you have multi-story homes. And in that multi-story home, you might have the wireless access point on the bottom floor or the top floor and find out that you are getting some signal on the floor above, but not that much. You're gonna need a couple wireless access points. One for the bottom floor, one for the top floor. 
And I've heard rumors of homes outside of Arizona that have these things called basements, apparently underground floors. If you want solid wireless at that level, you'll need to put an access point downstairs. Now, I also wanna make sure you catch the mounting angles and obstacles. Wireless signal is designed to be polarized at 90 degree angles. So you want your antennas either straight up and down or laid directly horizontally. <laughs> I've been in a whole lot of houses where I see people pointing the antenna kind of like in the direction they wanna go, kind of like a bazooka. And so they'll have all these antennas slanted that direction because maybe it's on one side of the house and they're like, I'm trying to like throw it to the other side of the house. You don't wanna do that. Your wireless signal will actually not be as good as if you just put all those antennas straight up and down or lay them horizontally, depending on how you have the wireless access point mounted. And now we come to the most important thing of this entire video, the wireless frequencies and channel selection. See, I mentioned before, your wireless access point can either be a 2.4 gigahertz device or a five gigahertz device, and some of them support both. But there's more to it than just that. Let's say that this is a 2.4 gigahertz wireless access point. Within that spectrum, you will need to select a channel. Think of these like lanes of a freeway. So if I chose this wireless access point to run on channel one, that means it's actually using 2.400 gigahertz through 2.4, well, one, two gigahertz, right about there. And all the clients that join that wireless access point automatically detect and join channel number one. If you have two wireless access points sitting right next to each other, that are both on the same channel, they will interfere with each other. If your house is next to a neighbor's house and they have a wireless access point on the same channel as you, you will get some bleed over and you'll get some interference and your wireless signal will not be as good as if you chose a channel that did not have any nearby devices. And here is one of the big problems with home Wi-Fi. Remember I said these are like lanes of a freeway. Well, you could think of this freeway as some drunken road engineer painting the lines. Lane number one or channel one goes like this. Lane number two or channel two goes like this. Imagine trying to drive on a freeway like that, where cars that are supposed to be next to you are actually sideswiping you because their lane overlaps with yours. If you look closely, the only channels in the 2.4 gigahertz space that don't overlap their frequencies is one, six, and 11. Because those are the only clean channels in that 2.4 gigahertz space with no signal overlap, that makes this the perfect design for your 2.4 gigahertz wireless in your house. You have three wireless access points, if you need that many, to cover your entire home, each one set on a different channel. The problem is, is unless you live in the little house in a prairie cottage, which probably wouldn't have wireless anyway, you have neighbors and they will mess you up. This guy will have his wireless access point on channel 11. And so you try to adjust yours to channel six and you go, oh, well, that means I got to change this to channel 11. Okay, now I'm good. Well, this guy over here has his on channel one and now you're going, uh, uh, and that, and that would be an ideal case. In many cases, a lot of times your, your neighbor who really has no idea what he's doing set his to channel three because that's his favorite number. And so he's chosen a lane that literally overlaps with both channel one and channel six. And we're in unlicensed wireless frequency land where there is nobody to complain to. <laughs> Though I have gone to neighbor's house and knocked on their door and said, hey, would you mind if, and I explain this whole thing that I'm explaining to you right now. And usually they can be accommodating. But the real answer is to move your house to the five gigahertz spectrum. The five gigahertz spectrum doesn't have as much range as the 2.4 gigahertz, but it has a lot more clean channels. You'll see these different standards, which in different countries, they allow different portions of the five gigahertz spectrum. So you really have to find out for your region and for your wireless equipment, which of these spectrums can you use? Within there, you'll have specific channels. Now, a lot of the wireless equipment will actually combine multiple channels together to gain an even larger lane on that freeway, meaning you can get more bandwidth. So the last thing I wanna do is show you how I set up my home for Wi-Fi. Now I've got to warn you, in order to set up the wireless in my house, I had to do some network cabling and that would be part of the installing network cabling and devices IT expertise series that we have at CBT Nuggets. Actually, you would only need to look at these four videos. Actually, if you like living on the edge, just do those three videos. We don't need to test our cables. Okay, now back to my house. This isn't quite my floor plan because my house was built in 1978. This is a garage. This is actually the family room. And we have a fourth bedroom squeezed in right here. So we'll call it bedroom number one, one, two, three, and four. Overall, my house is actually 1,600 square feet. And I would call my house Wi-Fi Extreme Makeover, 
meaning I have five wireless access points in a 1600 square foot home, but they're actually there for good reason. Let me show you where they're at. I've got one sitting in here in the dining room area. We've got one back here in the kid's bedroom. I've got one in my bedroom where I can actually fall asleep by the glow of a wireless access point. It's fantastic. There's one sitting in the garage and one near the back patio. Now, why do I have five wireless access points? Well, the first thing to understand is that the three inside of the house, this guy, this guy, and this guy are all five gigahertz only, all separated on their own channel. Now, just as a side note, you can always figure out what channels are in use in your area. Just go to Google and type in Wi-Fi scanner. And there's all kinds of free software out there. There's some for Android, some for Windows, some for Macintosh. It's all free, at least the stuff you want to use at home. And it can generate reports like this that actually shows which wireless networks are on which channels so that you can pick the best channel. In the Wi-Fi world, only one device can transmit at a time. Now, it can service multiple devices, and most people don't notice because it can switch between devices so fast. But in the family room, we have our entertainment. We have a Roku, we have a Wii, we have a Netflix-compatible device, and all of those are streaming devices. They're watching a movie or a television show, so they attach right here to this wireless access point. In the bedroom, I actually have IP surveillance, at least in our baby's room, where we can actually watch the baby at night from our bedroom without having to get out to see if the baby's doing okay. Now, that's tied right here to this wireless access point and doing a constant stream. If I didn't have this one, that wireless access point would always be competing against, first off, a far reach device, which is constantly streaming, and a close reach device, which is constantly streaming. Not to mention me sitting here on my smartphone in bed watching the baby. That's streaming from this wireless access point. Because I've kept everything internal on the five gigahertz space, the range of that barely reaches outside of the house. They are very low powered focused cells delivering exactly the wireless network that I need internally. Now the two wireless access points that are on the outside of the house run on 2.4 gigahertz. One of them is set to channel one, one of them is set to channel 11. Those just happen to be the cleanest ones in my neighborhood. Those deliver my guest Wi-Fi. Not only does this give us a far reach outside of our house, so when I'm sitting outside in the winter in Arizona, because we have nice weather then, I can sit on my laptop and work by the pool. Also, when we have guests come over and they want to use their phone and they say, hey, can I jump on your Wi-Fi? I have no problem giving them my guest Wi-Fi because it's completely isolated from our internal network here. And I don't have to worry about them getting into my baby camera. And that, my friends, is how you set up some pretty sweet home Wi-Fi. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.